Bigfoot captured is just mermaids the body found, but for Bigfoot. Yeah, it's that bad. Bigfoot Captured aired on the History Channel on November 9th. So this documentary is basically an idea of what would happen if Bigfoot was captured. This is not an actual documentary. These events, for the most part, are not real events. Let's, we'll, we'll start off with that. There's this director that's interested with the mystery of Bigfoot, and he says that he wants to be there when Bigfoot is found. And he happens to know a friend that saw Bigfoot in the Sierra Nevada mountains, and he wants to go interview him. So he and his friend conduct a night investigation where they are surrounded by a group of Bigfoots on both sides. They get so freaked out to where they just leave. That's it. They just leave. So then the director picks up on this new trip with a new team of Bigfooters that are out to try to catch Bigfoot. Yeah. So we'll start off with this team with the characters. The characters are terrible. These are the most stereotypical characters I've ever seen in one of these mockumentary type movies. First, there's the director. He's just basically the dude that's there that's videoing a trip of Bigfooters. And then he's there with this other chick that's just there because they needed a girl. And then there's the leader of the expedition. He is just your basic military type monster hunter. That's basically just his character. He's there because they needed a cool dude. Then there's the believer. The believer is the stereotypical nerd that thinks everything in the woods is a Bigfoot and based on my calculations type of guy. Last, but definitely absolutely least, is the skeptic. This is the worst character I have ever seen on any history type channel anything. <laughs> he's basically just there to tell everybody that they're wrong and he's right and that Bigfoot is definitely not real no matter what anybody says. This team, they camp for the night. And then in the middle of the night, they start hearing these strange whoops and knocks off in the distance. So when everybody wakes up, they flip on their flashlights, and the Bigfooter starts walking up to the woods and starts screaming, Aah! The Bigfoot eventually goes away. So after the night's over and it's the next day, the team goes and checks some of the trail cameras that they had up in the area, and one of the trail cameras shakes around and it gets knocked over onto the ground. Typical. So after that, the team goes and they investigate the surrounding area and they find a footprint. I guess you might be able to call it that. It's like, it looked like they scuffed the ground with their boot just before they filmed it. It looked terrible. And while they're walking around, they discover a small TP stick structure, which they discover has a deer carcass in it. And then the Bigfooter immediately goes around saying, Oh, Bigfoot was here. Bigfoot made this little stick structure and killed the deer and put it there. The skeptic is like, it's just people. So then they look around a little more and they find a full out stick teepee. I wonder how long it took them to make it. <laughs> so then the Bigfooter just goes around saying it has to be Bigfoot being completely non-scientific because apparently that is how society views Bigfooters. That night they set up camp and in the middle of the night they start hearing noises around their camp. And this is like the most ridiculous bloated scene. The skeptic is holding a gun. The Bigfoot apparently throws a rock, hits the skeptic. The skeptic <coughs> shoots the Bigfooter. And then Bigfoot chases the girl down a trail in the middle of the night. And then she's running. She has her camera facing backwards like this. So when she's running, we can see the dude in the costume chasing after him right behind him. I laughed at that point. That was just too funny. <laughs> So the next day after Bigfoot attacked their camp, the skeptic goes around saying, Oh dude, we gotta get out of here. There's people throwing catapulted rocks at us and chasing us through the woods. Moving on. So then they think the best interest to do is build a trap. So this is when history uses that cage from Bigfoot Bounty and then they use it to try and catch Bigfoot in this mockumentary. Well played history channel. So the trap is set. They're waiting there in the middle of the night. And in the middle of the night, they hear these noises coming from over by the cage. So then everybody grabs their guns. They walk over, ready to shoot at anything that pops out of the woods. And then they find a deer carcass in the cage. Now this was a scene that they also previewed to at the beginning of the movie. To try and get you interested, I guess. But it is 
the scene in the movie where the costume on the Bigfoot looks absolutely the worst. Or, out of all scenes to pick, you pick the one where the Bigfoot looks the worst. To try and get people hooked. By this point, I'm just all the way out. I'm just done. So then, once the Bigfoot pops up, they decide to go to commercial so they don't have to explain how they catch the Bigfoot. When it returns from commercial, the Bigfoot is already in the cage somehow. So then the girl takes up-close videos to brag on how good they made the costume, even though it wasn't great. Go see Something in the Woods. That movie had a fantastic Bigfoot costume in it. So after taking some up-close videos of the Bigfoot, they decide to tranquilize the Bigfoot so they can go up and get some DNA samples. Finally, they do something right. So then everybody goes to bed, and when they wake up in the morning, of course, the Bigfoot is gone. Like, if you're gonna make a mockumentary about what would happen if Bigfoot was captured, give us the end result. Don't just say, oh, the Bigfoot got away. I guess the lesson in this movie is Bigfoot can't be captured. So everybody gets up in the morning, everybody's screaming, yelling at each other, oh, it's your fault, you left the cage unlocked. Ah. So basically, that whole story was a mess. But surprisingly, there were aspects of this mockumentary that I actually enjoyed. First and foremost, they brought in Dr. Jeff Meldrum from Idaho State University. They show us what he's up to, and he is working on a 3D skeleton of what they think a Bigfoot skeleton would look like based on their best hypotheses and eyewitness reports. So then they had this huge eight foot tall Bigfoot skeleton made, which I have to say, that was pretty cool. That was cool to see. They also have the typical information that's in every Bigfoot documentary nowadays. That's why I'm starting to get tired of this new Bigfoot documentaries every single time, repeating the same formula in every documentary. So first, of course, they bring up the Gigantopithecus theory. So this theory states that back when the Bering Strait connected Asia and North America, that perhaps Gigantopithecus moved from Asia across the Bering Strait land bridge and dispersed across North America, and that's what we have Sasquatch. But we'll get into that in another video. But they did bring up a theory that I haven't heard too much from, which was that perhaps Bigfoot is a form of robust Australopithecus. Now, this was cool because it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air. I mean, I haven't heard this before, so I was just, yes! Thank you for bringing up some new information in a Bigfoot documentary. It was... That was one of the best parts in this. And then after that breath of fresh air, they of course mentioned the Patterson-Gimlin film. Now, I love the Patterson-Gimlin film. It's a really great piece of footage, and Bob Gimlin is a great dude. But, I mean, it's in every Bigfoot documentary nowadays. Give us something new, something fresh. They also touch on the Freeman footage, the Mink Creek, Idaho footage, and the Marble Mountain footage. And I haven't seen a whole lot of those videos and documentaries, so that was cool, but they didn't focus on it as much as they did the Patterson Gimlin film, of course. Here's the link to those pieces of footage in the description, so if you want to check out those pieces of footage, just click down below. Another thing that I thought was cool to see was that they brought Kelly Shaw from the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch organization into it. I thought that was a cool that he was in there. Then it goes on to interview Ben Mills, who was a witness of the Marble Mountain incident. So this was cool to give his perspective of the Marble Mountain footage. Something else this documentary does is take us to the Kumjing Monastery to look at the Yeti scalp. The native Sherpas believe it to be the scalp of a Yeti and they use it for rituals and ceremonies. But this was just proven to be the hide from a goat-like animal in the Himalayas. Alright, so the final piece of good information that they give us is Dr. Jeff Meldrum and Dr. John Bindernagel in British Columbia testing out a new drone technique to look for Bigfoot. And they're trying to use this technique to fly over the terrain with a thermal camera attached to see if they could see any large upright figures moving through the trees. And then it happens. They see an upright figure on the thermal imager. So Jeff and John immediately go to investigate. So I thought that was cool but strange because they never really said what it was. So then I did some digging on the internet, and it turns out Jeff Meldrum actually said in an interview that that was a crew member. They were just testing the thermal to see if they would be able to see if a figure was upright or not. But then in the edit, they made it look like they thought they were seeing a Bigfoot. So then after that, they go and investigate, they find nothing, and they give their final opinions. And at the end, the director gives his thoughts that Maybe it's in the best interest that Bigfoot remains a mystery, and that it's never discovered. Alright, so that's Bigfoot Captured. Overall, it had some enjoyable moments, but I wouldn't recommend this to really anybody. So if you're looking to get into some actual Bigfoot research, 
don't watch this documentary. Go check out Ancient Mysteries or Best Evidence Bigfoot, something like that. But my biggest tip would be not to watch documentaries. Go read some books. That is the best source of information for really everything. Just go read some books. If you're looking for entertainment, like, I know some people like those mermaids, megalodon, Russian yeti, all that stuff. A lot of people like those. So if you're into that kind of stuff, lost tapes. So if you're into that kind of stuff, just, then you'll probably find enjoyment in this. But for me personally, those aren't the ones I want to watch. I'm looking for actual research. Alright, so thank you everyone for watching, and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up below. And if you've had your own Bigfoot sighting, tell me down in the description below. Or, you know, tell me your favorite Bigfoot documentary or Bigfoot book that you've seen or read. And if you want to see more, click right here on the channel to see more.